I want to keep your attention for one more minute, if I may. We deal a lot with chronic pain. We deal a lot with chronic illness. We've got 100 million people more suffering with chronic pain. We've got all kinds of chronic pain, from back pain to neck pain to, low, to ridiculous pain as a result of herniated disc. All right? And it is creating this massive amount of disability in the country. We've got 47 and a half million people undisabled, and the top two causes of disability in this country are arthritis and back pain, I think, yes. Um, so we've got a huge problem in tens of millions of people suffering uh, with uh, chronic pain. 16.2 million people are disabled. Uh, the major cause of disability for people ages 14, 15 to 44 in this country are major depressive disorders. The number of people suffering from a mental illness are huge, and these are just going through the numbers. Uh, we're looking at 38.6 million people. It turns out that the cost for treatment of depression alone is costing us close to $100 billion a year. For anxiety disorders, $42 billion a year. This is not sustainable, okay? So we are spending over $600 billion a year for treatment of pain, a symptom, not the disease. The reason we're spending this much money is because we are not treating the right thing. The reason we are spending the, this much money is because we're not having success treating the way we're treating. We have to change this equation if we're going to be serious about getting people better and unburdening the health system from the amount of cost of all this. So what I want to make, and we want another example in terms of the damage that we've done in the process of going about this this way is we thought it was a spiffy idea to start using uh, opioids for the treatment of chronic pain. In 1997, the American Academy of Pain Medicine uh, put out a white paper and said, yeah, we can use opioids. The end result of which was a massive increase in the number of opioids used uh, every year in this country. Uh, gram per gram, people in the United States consume more narcotic medication than any other nation in the world. 99% of, pa or 90, I'm sorry, 90 of patients taking opioids are taking them to the treatment of chronic pain. We have 17,000 drug overdoses from opioid medications in this country a year. 60% of these deaths are a result of opioids prescribed for the treatment of chronic pain and taken appropriately. Appropriately or inappropriately? Okay, this is a problem. We are approaching a $5 trillion problem in the next 20 years if we don't do something to reverse this trend. What I want to get to is what we've done is we've created a, a research and education foundation. So what I did was I wrote oop, that book and I took a bunch of the proceeds from that book and I said, okay, let's do something better with it. All right. So what I did was I took a big chunk of the proceeds from that book and I put it into a 501c3 foundation. We created this foundation for total recovery. The foundation for total recovery is geared to find a cure for neuroinflammatory disease. Its focus is on people suffering with chronic pain and depression, but the ramifications of this will spill over in terms of other neuroinflammatory processes. The way we have been going about trying to research this and study this, I think is wrong. I think the evidence that it's wrong is the abysmal failure we have and, and the carnage that we've left in the way we've been treating it to date, the un unsustainable cost of being able to treat these conditions. So we need a new way to do this. Foundation has a couple of very specific objectives. One is education. We want to be able to put out new information and make it readily available to everybody. Second is creating community, connect, connecting people suffering with chronic pain and depression with researchers and clinicians so that they can talk and answer each other's questions. Third is conducting research, and that's one of the biggest things that we're interested in doing. And what we want to do is a large research project that will redefine these conditions by their biology, not by their symptoms. All right, we are done with the age of descriptive medicine. We are now entering the age of biology. Biology is a truly individualized description of medicine. So what we want to do is we want to look at these people looking at their genomics. So we're going to start with the symptom descriptions. But now we're going to look at their genomics. We're going to look what their genes are. 
We're going to look at how these genes are expressed, looking at things called metabolomics and proteomics. And we're going to look at the gut microbiome for all the reasons that I talked to you about earlier about the signaling information. We may add some other stuff. We're pulling together a group of really top researchers to advise us on this. People from different specialty areas that don't, normally don't come together to do the research. And so the objective is to see if we can find, and we're going to feed all this information, by the way, and there are models for this, into a, an artificial intelligence program. And the reason for that, we're talking with the people at IBM and Watson, the reason for that is the amount of data is much too large to make sense out of by ourselves. We need a program that can sift through the data and start identifying the similarities. Utilizing a program such as this, they just published a study on type 2 diabetes where they've taken type 2 diabetes and divided it into three subtypes, which are predictive now in terms of risk for people developing strokes and heart disease versus people who are not going to go on to develop those conditions. So this business of redefining disease biology is crucial in order for us to move forward. And it's going to completely change the way we treat disease and allow us to treat individually. So that's what the foundation's all about, specifically focused on neuroinflammatory disease. We need your help. How can you help? We need your help in terms of money. So if any donations are all tax deductible and if you're feeling generous toward the end of the year, we need all the help we can do with that. Because that's what's going to fund us to get the research done and build all the rest of the infrastructure we need to build. Go to the website. We've actually put a fair amount in place so far. We need people who will invite us into their homes to be able to talk to other people who might be able to help us out. People who are savvy in social media, people who understand how to help us connect with other people in order to be able to raise funds, but in order to build the community. And then we also need people who can work with us and who know about social media, can help us get the word out. So we're looking for help in a number of different ways. And we're also looking for patient stories. Because the public needs to understand, because part of what we're doing also is, is public outreach, so they understand what this disease is. One of the problems is that people suffering with chronic pain and depressive disorders do not have any crutches or scars but they're suffering horrifically. And being able to get these stories out so that people can hear these stories, help them understand what it is we're fighting against and what it is we want to be able to find solutions for. So your stories also can be extremely helpful to us in being able to educate the public about what we're doing. So if you can find it in your hearts and time to give us some help with the foundation, I'd love to hear from you and uh, make use of your talents and skills. So thank you.